Everybody and welcome back to Fuji's Blitz and wow this is a different type of video it's more of like a water cooler moment video so to speak it's you know I did a video a long time ago called my current thoughts on the game which a lot of people looked at a lot of people saw but it kind of went unheeded this is a similar type of video so you're gonna see some replays in the background they they don't really relate much to anything that I'm saying as such they're just there to keep you more intrigued rather than listening to my monotonous voice. So why am I doing this video? Well, I'm doing this video for a few reasons. It's been no surprise to most people that I've kind of been inactive on YouTube and on the game, to be perfectly honest with you, since around November of last year. And there are a few reasons for that, and, and that's what I want to discuss. So let's deal with the first elephant in the room. I mean, you know, I, I put it on my YouTube channel in the community tab, and I also put it on my Discord channel. One of the reasons why I've not been as active recently is because my wife um, basically had a thing called polycystic kidneys, which meant that towards the end of last year, unfortunately, she had to have surgery to have both her kidneys removed. Now, I personally didn't realize you can actually live without kidneys, but you can, but you know, it's not easy guys. It's, 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 it's actually rather traumatic. We, because basically everything you eat and drink and all that sort of stuff creates toxins in your blood. And what your kidneys do, your kidneys filter out those toxins um, and basically you pee your, the, those toxins out. When you have no kidneys, then your body no longer is able to filter out those toxins and you're no longer able to pee. And it's a big problem. So every couple of days, she has to troop off to the hospital for like six odd hours and have a thing called dialysis, which, um, which basically is a machine that acts as your kidneys. It removes your blood, cleans your blood and sticks it back in. It still doesn't make you pee. I mean, there's no escaping that. You still can't pee. Which brings her to her next problem, which means everything she drinks, and don't forget your body is made up a majority of water, everything she drinks stays in her body. Now, that may not sound that traumatic, but it is. Because, firstly, we live in Dubai, which is a hot country, and therefore you have to drink a lot. You have to be hydrated all the time. Secondly, you have to be hydrated all the time, generally, because you're a human being. Um, and, and, and thirdly, you know, drinking is a normal thing. So she, she can't really drink anymore, which, well, she can, but it becomes uncomfortable because obviously all the fluid she takes in doesn't dissipate throughout her body. It stays in her body. And, you know, she can effectively put on two to three kilos in weight in just liquids, which is unbelievable. And then she has to go to this dialysis and have those liquids removed. So it's, it's been a bit of a traumatic time. We, we, we spend a lot of time in hospital, as you can imagine. And, you know, it, it has lots of different effects. So that's one of the reasons why I, I've not been on the game and, and on YouTube for any great length of time. Um, the other reason is, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love this game. It, it, it's, it's, it's a game I absolutely love. But, and I'll be honest with you all here, I have generally fallen out of love with Blitz. And I know I'm not the only one. Now, I haven't fallen out of love with Blitz because of missile tanks. Um, let's get that off the bat straight away. We'll get to missile tanks. That's not the reason I've fallen out of love with Blitz. I've fallen out of love with Blitz. Blitz for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I, I, I just found the game stagnated. And when I say I found the game stagnated, uh, I mean it was the same thing over and over again. The same MM, 
the same, you know, clueless players, the, 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 the same thing. You know, you, you roll out in tier seven and there's smashes everywhere. Followed by Wargaming's incessant bombardment of premium tanks. I mean, that, that really did get me down. I, I came to a decision a long time back that I would stop reviewing premium tanks because, you know, I'm, I'm not paid by Wargaming. I don't do this as a job. I don't earn shed loads of money from YouTube. And you know what? I cannot afford to keep up with all the premium tanks that come in the game. And don't even get me started on crate tanks because, you know, I, I, okay, I did a live stream the other day. I said I'd buy two crates. I spent $100 and got fuck all. And, and, you know, it's things like that that piss me off. Now, don't get me wrong, YouTube, not YouTube, Wargaming are a company and they, they you know, like all companies, the idea is to earn money. And I don't begrudge them selling premium tanks. I begrudge them selling them every bloody day, don't get me wrong. But I don't begrudge them selling premium tanks. I don't like crates, um, to, be, to be honest with you. I mean, if, you, if you're going to sell a tank, sell a tank. Don't stick it in a crate. You know, if you think the tank's worth $100, then sell it for $100. Don't, don't, don't fleece people and stick it in crates. I mean, okay, I'm with Meadsy to an extent in this one, whereby, at the end of the day, guys, it's up to you. Nobody forces you to buy the crate. Nobody forces you to gamble. Nobody forces you to do any of that shit. But, I, I, I just don't like the concept. And, and the reason I don't like the concept of crates, because it's temptation. And, and, you know, it's human nature that I want that tank because it's been hyped up. So you drop your first $50, you didn't get it. Oh, I'd just give it another go and you don't get it. And you keep going and going until you get it because that's human nature and that's the whole idea. And that's why crates are in the game. And that's why crates are in a lot of games because that's what humans do, funnily enough. We, we have an inability to say, no, I don't want to do anymore. No, I'm spending too much money. And, you know, the recent tank that came out in the crate, I forget what it was now. It was a tier 10. It was the WZ, the, 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 the Chinese tier 10. And I said, okay, I'll buy one crate. And I bought the one bundle of crates, which turned out to be six crates. That was $50. Didn't get it. So I said, oh, I'll give it one more go. And I didn't get it. And then I said, that's it. I'm not going to try again. Fuck you, Wargaming. You know, you've had $100 of my money. Yeah, I, I've not got a hundred dollars worth of shit back in real terms. In air terms, I have because they gave me a load of boosters, and they gave me gold and all that sort of crap. But the, but the gold did not amount to a hundred dollars. But if you add the boosters up, because don't forget you can buy boosters now. If you add the boosters up, the free XP and all that sort of stuff, then yeah, okay. In wargaming's eyes, I got a hundred dollars worth of shit back. But you have to know when to say that's enough. And it's like, it, that's why it's a form of gambling, because like like all forms of gambling, one more go and I'll win. One more go and I'll win. It, that's like crates. One more go and I'll get the tank. And you have to set yourself a goal, guys. You, you have to be disciplined yourself. Now, everybody bemoans crates. Everybody says, oh, crates are shit, crates are this, crates are that. But nobody sticks a gun to your head and says, buy a crate. They don't do that. It's your choice, it's your call. And if you wish to purchase crates, then don't bitch about it afterwards. I mean, you can't blame Wargaming. I, I don't agree with the tactics of crates, but I understand it from a business perspective. And as I said, you have to get yourself to a point where you're disciplined enough to say, I'm only gonna buy one crate, or I'm only gonna buy one bundle of crates, and that is it, no more. And, and save your own money, because like, like a gambler, when you lose, everybody else is to blame but yourself, and that's just not right. So. I kind of lost love with the game, I'll be honest with you. It, it, it happened at the same time as other things in my life became more of a priority, of course. And had, had the one thing not happened, then maybe this wouldn't have had a knock-on effect. But it does. It does. And, you know, let's talk about the MM. Now, look, everybody's whinging about the MM. And I'm one of the people who whinges about the MM. And... I whinge about it because when you lose, everybody's a knob, and when you win, everybody's fantastic and you don't even give a shit about the MM. Um, well, let's just look at a few things. I'll be honest with you, I, I haven't actually seen a material change in the MM since 
since day one that I began the game way back in 2014, to be honest with you. The MM has always been the MM, to be honest with you. I mean, I care a lot of people say, yeah, but they change the parameters. I, you, you don't notice that. They're, they're not noticeable differences in, in my view. Sometimes you get paired up with good teams. Sometimes you get paired up with shit teams. It's the look of the draw. It, you know, it just happens. And unfortunately, what generally happens is the following. You know, players leave, new players come. And the new players also have to play in the MM. Now, I know that Wargaming has said that there's going to be different queues and different this and different that. Well, that shouldn't be your, that shouldn't interest you in the slightest, to be honest with you. What interests you is you get in the game and you do the best that you can whilst you're playing that game. And hey, you're not always going to win. And hey, you're not always going to be teamed up with people who know what they're doing. And hey, you're not always going to be in a team of experienced players. It's just the way it works. That doesn't mean to say that the game is fucked and everybody needs to, you know, delete it and throw it out the window. You just have to adapt, you have to improvise, and you have to overcome. All you can do is the best that you can do. Simple. It's a game, guys. And if you're playing the game because you just want to win, then you're never going to do that. Nobody wins in this game 100%. You're always going to lose a game. If you're playing the game because you enjoy it, then enjoy it for what it is. And if you're playing the game to get better, then take it as a challenge that you've got shit MM. Don't take it as a kick in the teeth. Just think, well, okay, my time to shine. I'm a better player than the other Muppets on my team, and I'm gonna prove it. Why, why throw your toys out of the pram? Which brings me to missiles. Now, missiles, where do I start with missiles, for fuck's sake? I did a video when they first came out on the T-95 and I said, look, it's a fun tank and I enjoy it. Tr truly, I enjoy it. I think it's a great tank. Um, why do I enjoy it? Well, because I get to blow shit up. It's as simple as that. There's a reason I play the game. I play the game because I like blowing shit up. Um, now, I thought it was, a, it was a good thing that they did that they brought these in. It, it's not the T-49A, which was a disaster. I mean, it was a disaster. Okay, I do think that there are some things wrong with the missiles. I think the, the penetration is too high for the missiles at the end of the day. And the reason I think it's too high is, you know, I don't, I don't care about the damage it dishes out, and I think the damage is right. I don't care about the armor on the Sheridan or the T-95. Um, I know some people, I mean, some people have said, oh, they should remove some of the armor, take the space armor away. I don't think they should. I think the armor should stay as it is. I think the mobility should stay as it is. I think the load time should stay as they are. But I think the penetration values are too high. It's a missile. And this is a World War, effectively, you know, World War II post-war game. And, you know, like it or lump it, the missiles weren't that sophisticated in those days. You know, think of the Katusha rocket launcher. They were little, diddly little, you know, arrow things. They, they didn't have amazing penetration. They were just good artillery pieces. And it's the same as the Nurbelwerther, the German version, or the rockets that they stuck on the RAF Typhoons or whatever. These things did not have amazing penetration. They had good damage and they are a pain in the ass, but they didn't have this super duper fantastic penetration that you see with the missiles in Blitz. So my only complaint is, I don't care about the aiming cycle, to be honest with you. I don't care that the aiming part is broken because you know, it's bloody difficult to aim it from your lookout bar and do all the other things at the same time. Trust me, I've tried and I'm an average player. You know, you have to be super duper dexterous to be able to make all your missiles count from sitting at the back, aiming it up in the air and using your lookout bar to, to direct it. You really do. I mean, give it a go yourself, guys. You'll, you'll get away with it, you know, one in five games, I think. You're not going to get away with it all the time. But what really does fry my noodle is its penetration values. The penetration values need to come down. And if the penetration values came down, I don't think many, most of you will whinge. Because look, I'll be honest with you, I think the tanks are easily counterable. They're, they're not invincible tanks. They're really not invincible tanks. I mean, you can take them out and you can take them out pretty easily. And like I said in the video I released, if I had a penny 
for every time somebody told me that the game that these were going to break the game or this tank was going to break the game I, I wouldn't need to do anything I wouldn't need to work I mean the smasher was going to break the game the Kenny Otsu breaks the game the missile tanks break the game the auto loading auto reloaders or whatever the fuck they're called are going to break the game every tank that's introduced that's something different is going to break the game and it doesn't you know and I saw a recent video by Meadzy who says they're going to be nerfed, and they will be nerfed. It's as simple as that. I don't know how they're going to be nerfed, but they'll be nerfed and things will slow down. And not only that, they're new. And when anything is new, people play them. And they play them and play them and play them until they get bored with them. It's like all things that are new and novel. I mean, I remember when the T-22 first came out, that was going to break the game. You know, the T-22 was going to break the game. And, you know, people played it for a while and they lost interest and now they play other things. The Death Star was going to break the game, but yeah, that was, that was all over the place and the, you know, the Death Star's not the thing it used to be. So you just have to give it time. But the thing is, it's still just a game, guys. Just chill, relax, enjoy it for what it is. And if you don't enjoy it, then don't play. Take, some, take a break, take some time out. That's what I did, okay? Because uh, all you're going to do is end up hating something for the wrong reasons. It's, it's as simple as that. So, you have to take these things carefully. Now, the other thing I want to say is, well, what did I want to see from the game? Well, my view on that hasn't changed, to be honest with you, since the last video I did. And in the last video I did, I said, more effort needs to be made by Wargaming with regard to training. And it does. It really, really, really does. Because... There is a lack of training. Now, I'm not saying that Wargaming should go and stick training, you know, make you train for the first hundred games. I mean, that's just stupid and ridiculous. No one's going to be interested in that. But there are hundreds of YouTubers out there. Hundreds now. There are YouTubers galore. I mean, Blitz is just swamped with YouTubers. Get them to do videos. And get, you know, you've got bloody video ads in the garage. Make, give them 10 bloody gold or 50 gold or whatever it is gold for watching a training video. What is the issue? I don't understand what the issue is. I mean, I get to, I, I get to do a mission at the moment for watching five videos. And I get five videos of shitty games that I'm not interested in. Now, if you were to give me two videos of shitty games I'm not interested in, in three videos on training, you know what? That'd be probably more beneficial to me. Problem is, wargaming earn money from you watching videos. I mean, it, it, it's a trade-off. You know, they're not just giving you something for nothing. You watch a video and they get advertising revenue from it. So, this is the crux. Now, maybe they could, you know, look at a way of making you watch a video and still earn revenue. I don't know, but I think that's what they should be looking to do. They should be looking, to sticking in that garage, you know, and in your bloody missions. Watch two training videos. What's the problem with that? And okay, the, the videos for the shitty games that you're being offered take, what, 30 seconds? Fine, and you get 50 gold or something? Fine, fine. Or 10 gold or whatever it is. Then, you know, gold, to be honest with you, Wargaming, doesn't mean much to you. You could give somebody a five minute video on training and give them, I don't know, 500 gold for watching it. That way you increase the player base you get them to watch videos, Bob's your uncle, everybody's happy, and toxicity levels go down. Which was the final reason why I lost my love for the game. Now, I'm pretty thick-skinned, to be perfectly honest with you. And, you know, a lot of people rip into me because of my win rate and all that. Now, you know what? I don't give a flying fuck. I don't care about my win rate. I don't care if you think I'm a shit player or not. I really don't care. I play the game because I enjoy it. I play the game because it's fun. I play the game because I like blowing shit up. Simple as that. I don't play the game to become some esports superstar. I don't play the game um, to become a professional. That's not the reason why I play the game. I enjoy it. And of course, I would love to have a 65 odd percent win rate, but I screwed my win rate up long ago. And to change it now, would, 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 would take a lot of games and a lot of effort. And I play it for fun. I don't play it to chase a win rate. But what 
gets me is all the toxicity that still exists within the game. And, you know, I just sit there and say, guys, just chill the fuck out. Really? You know, is, is this a life and death scenario? Really? You know, this guy not putting his tank in, the, in, a, in a certain position, does that really prompt you to type things like, you're, you're an idiot, delete the game, fuck off, and all that? No, it's just a game, <laughs> for Christ's sake. I mean, look at it, a professional footballer. Okay, if you play professional football and one of your team players makes a mistake, do you see the rest of the team run over and put fingers in his face going, you're oh, such an idiot, get out of the game, you shouldn't be playing? No, of course not. But it's blitz and it's a game and it's an internet based game to be fair which means everybody can hide behind that anonymity and that's jet that's normal that's what happens fucking trolls are out there everywhere so that is my i don't know coffee table moment and what i was thinking i want to do um possibly every tuesday a live stream not where i'm playing the game with you guys but where we get around for an hour and to and discuss the game. I want to do that. I want to get to a, a point in the community where every every week, you know, we can get together and talk about what pisses us off, what we think is good, and we can share those views. And if we can do it as a live stream, it'll be fantastic. If you think that's a good idea, let me know. I mean, I'd be up for that. Um, I'd be up for interviewing people, having a chinwag, like, you know, like, I don't know, like a... It'd be like daytime TV chat show for Blitz. Let me know your thoughts and your views on that. And look, you've seen some games in the background. I just want to go through those quickly. The first game was from a, from a good friend of mine called uh, Is Royalty of Legion, who's a very good player and who recently left the game because he's pissed off. And he's one of many, to be honest with you. He's not the only one. He's one of many who've left the game for whatever reason. I've got other friends saying they're leaving the game because the missiles were too much. We then had a good friend of mine, Grumpy Old Tanker. I stuck his replay in because I very rarely play his replays and he's always on my live stream and he's a nice chap and he's a good friend and I thought, hey, I can play your replay. Uh, this is Stubbo, who's my clan lead, who unfortunately because I've been playing often, I haven't spoken to him a lot. And he's rolling out in the Broken Smasher and as you can see, not every Smasher is going to take a mastery. But you can also see how broken it really is. He's already done 3,372 damage. But as the Smasher killed the game, I mean, it's amazing. Before the missile tanks came out, everybody bemoaned the Smasher. And now the Smasher's in, everybody has forgotten about the Smasher. It's not as broken as it used to be. Which is just ridiculous, because it's still broken. It's still a broken tank. It's still a tank that is wow, wow overpowered for what it is. I mean, fuck me, it's a KV-2, guys. It's a KV-2 that is better than a KV-2 by a long shot. It's a fantastic tank. It's a absolutely hilarious tank to play. And I love every single second of the game in that thing. Anyway, that's my sort of coffee break moment, water cooler moment, whatever you want to call it. Big thanks to his royalty of Legion, or previously of Legion, Grumpy Old Tanker, Critical Hit, who I didn't mention because he's too OP, and Stubbo for kindly letting me use their replays, even though they didn't know I was going to use them for this. Ta -da. By all means, guys, I'd love to hear your views, your comments, and everything below. If you haven't pressed subscribe yet, please do so. It's a nice thing to do. Send me some replays to uh, fujitsblitz at gmail.com or join my Discord. And until the next time, stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking, because that's what it's all about, having fun and being happy.